Uh, let me take you back a bit. Can you give us an idea of how big uh, Heart of Tara is? And um, maybe also give us an idea of growth, how you moved from, like you said, one store to the number yes. of stores you have now over mm. a period of how many years? Okay, ha, that's very tough. I'm very bad with dates. Um, very bad with dates. Um, but I'll try in terms of milestones, growth milestones. So, um, obviously, we started as uh, me going from house to house with my makeup box. And then we moved from that to having my first makeup studio, which was on Adiola Hopewell. Um, this, so my, my second child is now 16 years old. Um, and the store was opened just before he was born. Uh, it was opened, so I'd say 17 years ago was our, well, what we opened our first makeup studio uh, in, in, uh, in Adjola Hopo, very close to, law, to the Nigerian Law School, right behind uh, Intercontinental Bank. And we were there for a few years. And then and I know you came there as well when we opened officially. And then we moved from there to Okwawo, uh, which was opposite Latana Ventures. And we were there for many, many years. Um, so in Latana Ventures, uh, we then, it was the first time we decided, we decided to expand because the landlady that we had at the time was constantly increasing our rent every month, every year. And uh, VI of till to now was very expensive. And so we decided to move out. But before we decided to make the decision to move out, we decided to have um, a survey, you know, by our customers. And we asked the customers, you know, would you prefer for us to be in Ikeja or you prefer for us to be in VI? And 50% was in the middle, right? 50% said, we want you to be here, okay? Um, and then another 50% 50, 50 said, we want you to be on the island. And another 50% said, we want you to be in Ikeja. And mm. it gave us an opportunity to realize that there was a market in Ikeja, but there was also a market in BI. So we couldn't shut down BI to then move um, to, to... So we decided to sublet a portion of our location in BI to reduce the rent and then rent a place in, um, in uh, Ikeja. Uh, and it was an amazing response that we got. We got a whole building in Ikeja. It's very funny how people started asking me at the time whether we're a youth core uh, NYSC camp because there were just so many people who were, you know, youth coppers coming in all the time. That's where we found our first uh, makeup school, right? Because we had a lot of space for that as well. And from there, um, we, someone said to us that he wanted the franchise, the House of Tara franchise. And I was a bit shocked. Uh, that somebody wanted a house of franchise and i thought he didn't even know what franchise meant but he had a complimentary business he was in the photography space and his place was in he he started his business on campus in ife and now had graduated and started business in ibadan so he had a thriving business in in one of the cosmopolitan part of ibadan and he needed um he had space but he needed another brand that was complimentary to photography so he came and asked us for the house of Tara franchise and that's how we started to put together our retail operation system that could make it easy for people to adopt um, our, our business model and replicate it in other cities. And we went to, from, in, from Ibadan, opening our first franchise store in Ibadan, and then we got another franchise opportunity in Port Harcourt. And so we opened two in Port Harcourt as well. And, and, and from there, we started to expand. One year, we expanded rapidly. I don't remember the year, but I have to. I wish you, if you had told me this question, I would have had them written okay. down so that I could give you more information. But then we opened one in one year. Uh, I think, I don't remember what year it was, but we opened almost nine branches in one year uh, from Kano to Kaduna to Lori and, and the likes. And uh, in terms of our product line, we started with uh, a set of makeup brushes. Was the first product that we create we had in terms of makeup product but of course you know that we had our bridal directory that we we created as well um uh, before this this was our very very first product because we're such a bridal business at the time and then of course as we started to evolve we created our own line of of products and the first makeup pro the first product we had was makeup brushes because of the number of people who were coming for training and with the makeup brushes also came uh, our first lipsticks our first lip glosses. So we started with three lip glosses and three eyeshadows. Uh, today we have almost almost 500 different SKUs of products uh, from all shades of powders, foundations, lipsticks, lip liners, pencils, um, you know, bronzers, blushes, brushes, tools. Um, now we're expanding to skincare as well. Um, so that's 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 the uh, in terms of product, in terms of uh, size across the country. Then we also had a distribution model 
uh, where we're empowering young women, and we've had over 15,000 young women register to, to distribute our products in different parts of the country. Um, and of course, you know, two, three years ago, we, our case, the case study, House of Child case study was written by Stanford University, and it's currently being sold on the Harvard website. Uh, it's one of the greatest joys for us as a business where we can be recognized internationally um, and celebrated uh, by our, for our business model. So how do you feel when you look back at the growth of um, House of Tara and you being at the helm of affairs? How do you um, think? Uh, there are many times where I'm very excited. There are other times I'm, I'm like, oh my God, such a burden. <laughs> Um, uh, and I think as I've gotten older, I feel more, I feel more of the budding um, than I'm excited. I, I, I mean, recently, I think it was in March, that I got listed as one of the uh, top 50 women, most influential women, most powerful women by Forbes in Africa. And I remember, I mean, I remember your, your, your magazine also covered it. And one of the things that that did to, for me in the past, would do for me, would make, make me extremely excited. But when I saw the letter, all I thought to myself was, gosh, if only you'd known the burden that I had to carry, you know. Um, I wish somebody could just give me uh, freedom, right? Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case because where I am now, especially where House of Tara is at this time, needs strong leadership uh, because we're transitioning and no one knows. So this is not a time to say you're going to bring in somebody else to do, to do the work. I have to do the work. But I'm looking forward to retiring soon. <laughs> And then um, what, what would be your message to a lot of young um, ladies out there who are also grappling with their, uh, their businesses and they're looking at what to do and how to cope mm -hmm. with the new normal? What would be your message to them? Uh, I would say, first of all, your, your, there's a quote, a lovely quote that says that every cell of your body is responding to your thoughts. Every cell of your body is responding to your thoughts. Um, I want you to make sure that this time you are you're exposed to um, news that helps you be innovative, innovative news that inspires you, that puts, puts you, always puts you in a place of inspiration. Because unfortunately, um, we are so surrounded with such negative news that it's going to affect many business owners because then you can't think and you can't innovate. Uh, you're so afraid. And, and that happened to me as well because I was already used to a certain normal. And here I told I was suddenly being moved from what I already knew. And I feel like I lost some time. And the reason why I lost that time was because my thoughts were not positive. My thoughts were, were thoughts of fear rather than of faith. My thoughts were not, it did not encourage innovation. And, and so what I would say to you is clear your mind. Uh, one day I woke up and deleted myself from every WhatsApp group where people were always analyzing the situation of how bad things were, right? And the minute I exited those groups, I found I began to have some liberty and freedom. Um, I started to exercise, right? Go out for runs in the morning. Um, and by doing that, just exposing, allowing my mind to just open up um, and, and, and see the positive and not read anything, not, not learn about how many cases in Nigeria, right? I was no longer interested in finding those, getting those because I had enough of it. Uh, and I, so my advice to you is keep your, the environment um, free from anxiety. Choose uh, faith over fear. And remember that every cell in your body is responding to your thoughts. Okay. Can you share with us your beauty secrets? I mean, you've always looked um, um, like younger and younger and younger. I mean, you, I, I wonder how you do it. And you don't, um, I mean, you've always looked like Tara that. Uh, <laughs> Publisher is trying to be political. He wants to say you look finer <laughs> than you looked before. <laughs> I, I think number one is... Um, it's, it's not, I don't want to say it's some beauty secret. It's my powder on the foundation. Nigerian women know what makeup does to them, right? But I think it's internal, a sense of peace. Um, also being loved, I think it's a good feeling, but also loving yourself. So I've come to accept my, my flaws. I've ex I examine myself, examine my, what my flaws are, accepting that those flaws exist, but also amplifying my strengths so that I become more and more confident. As I've gotten older, uh, I know the areas where I'm not where I'm not strong and I seek for help in those areas. I've surrounded myself intentionally with people who want to live a radiant life, people who, they're not necessarily the most beautiful, but they're most joyful. Uh, and so I take my time to spend time with people like that, um, who you feed up, because there's some things that you don't learn because they teach you, you learn because of association. 
and, and, and I expose myself to that. On top of that, you know, I have an extremely loving husband. Um, I think that adds up. Even any woman who's married to a loving husband is likely to be fine now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, sorry? There's a network problem. There's a bit of network problem. Hello. Right, I wanted her to take that. That's part of it again. No, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. I wanted you to take that line again. I can't hear you. Very connected. No. Okay. You are back. back now. You are back now, yes. We can hear you now. Um, um stay maybe radiant. You, maybe you should reconnect. Okay. Should you ex exit and come back? Should you exit and come back? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're good now. We're good now. Okay. We can hear okay. you now. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So I said that. You know, if you are surrounded with, with loving people, uh, people who have joy in, in them, and joy comes from within, um, you're li more likely to radiate. Um, and so I would say, give love, accept love, surround yourself with love. Give love, accept love, and surround yourself with love. Thank you very much. Thank you, really. publisher. It was yes, lovely to see you again. Session. Thank you. So what would be your last word for um, your viewers and those watching you now? What would be your last, um, I mean, your advice and message to them? Yeah, you know, I just had a chat with my mom just before I got on. And my mom always, my mom lives in a, she lives in a townhouse that has a, a flat upstairs for, for, my mom is 76. And her neighbor is a young, grouchy girl, really grouchy. Um, and the girl has always been i've known for years she's just been that way really really grouchy um sometimes you don't know what what, what people have been through uh, but my mom hasn't been out of her house for for almost three months and yesterday she came out today she decided to come out again and this horrible girl in quotes saw her as she stepped out and called her from upstairs to say would you like me to clear up the front of your the front front of your house to make it comfortable so you can actually sit here and people will come and visit you and see you from across the road as opposed to you shutting them out through the window and this young lady came downstairs my mom says and just created a small haven for her right so here was my mom was calling everyone to just call the girl to say thank you and my mom said to me at the end of the day she said you know this crisis has brought out things in people that we didn't even know they had and I'd like you guys to all look at this season and say, look, what, 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 what was amazing? Uh, if nothing else, um, my mom lives in the UK and the Ishekiri community, uh, the society that she joined when she first got to, to England, sent out foodstuffs, cooked Ishekiri meals, owo, banga, starch, to the homes of all the elderly people from 60 and above. Those who had returned back to Nigeria, who lived in Koko, who lived in small villages, they had found a way, created a network, and delivered cooked food to those homes. And what I see is kindness. And I'm, I had tears in my eyes when she told me, now, it's not like my mom doesn't have food, but it's, that's not it. It's about the thoughts. The thoughtfulness is the looking through the database, finding the people who are over 60 years of age, finding that they may need help. And if they don't, it doesn't matter. We just, we're just going to deliver, right? And to think that these are some of the things that have happened in this time that didn't happen before. And so what is that, what is that sparkle? What is that bright light? 
in this season. Look out for it and let yours shine as well.